Hi guys. What we have here is a, a alien phaser rifle that was originally built for next generation. This was built by Bear Burge in the first season. A few other things about this rifle. Um, with most props on Star Trek, especially next generation DS9, Voyager, and Enterprise, but specifically the first three, um, we usually never had any more than six days to produce anything for the show. Um, so you have to think fast on your feet and just kind of go with what you're working on because you don't really don't have the time to sit and decide, you know, you know, is this going to be eight inches or is this going to be seven inches? So generally speaking, we would get a drawing for something like this from Rick Sternbach or uh, Robert Dagato or uh, John Eves, depending what show we were on at the time. And, well, you know, you can see in some cases these aren't exactly perfect and, and symmetrical as far as spacing and everything. But when you're working on a show that you have to get things done that quickly, you have to cut a few corners here and there. Um, it was just that in this particular case, this was actually faster to get the rifles done for the show than making the molds to make additionals later, which is what we prefer to do if we can do it instead of sending the original master out. The main body of this gun from here to here is made out of gelatin, a wood that we use for making prototype pieces uh, as well as vacuform mold. The piece here is cast. This is rubber trim. It's always good to use some rubber trim inside of some of these props because it gives you added detail without all of the hassles. Some of you may recognize this handle piece here. This is actually a handle from the Romulan Disruptor. This is a piece of ABS tube that was put on a lathe and, and cut the size and these lines were put in. As you can see, they're, they're not very consistent. For the episode that we were originally doing this for, we ended up having to make three of these rifles in about two days. So instead of us, ha we didn't have the time to mold and cast three of these rifles because this wasn't the only prop for that episode. So three of them were hand constructed using gelatin and other component pieces. Now, the tip here was made out of acrylic, but we and we did mold that. That piece we actually had enough time to actually make a mold of. This is actually a screen used hero prop as well. This was actually used in the show since we had to make them. Um, I was lucky enough to get one back so that we could actually make molds and make additional castings. This is also was used on DS9 and Voyager and Enterprise. Um, this rifle was, was used on DS9 as Kira's resistance rifle, and a bunch of other characters and, and, and races used it. Now, this is actually a, a functional unit. If you remove this panel, this is a compartment for a, a nine volt battery, which this is a functional switch and the light came out of the tip. I don't know if you ever ex actually see the light going off or not, but you do see beams coming out of it in some of the episodes. This, uh, as you can see, it is a mirror of the other side. These panels were stacked styrene that was cut in a stack so that we could duplicate these pattern pieces over and over again, uh, all at one time, actually, on a bandsaw. Uh, then they were all sanded, cleaned up, edges rounded as necessary, and placed onto each of the wooden pieces. Now, when we did a mold, all of these are cast in place. After the first time we used this, there were no more functional uses on these units. We didn't uh, usually have batteries in 
a lot of the, the weapons anymore because the actors kept pushing the buttons at the most inappropriate times. And it confused some of the uh, effects people who were putting in the laser beams. This also has been modified, as you can see here, for a bayonet mount for, for a DS9 episode. It had a very interesting blade on it that we called the toucan, um, only because it had two blades that came out like a toucan's beak. The actual bayonet had two points, one that would go into this point here and then into that. There was then a hole placed on this plane that went into the bayonet handle mount, which was a quick release so you could actually put it on and pin it in and it would stay on. I hope you'll have some questions for me at the end. Thank you.